Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL Week 13 preview between the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Vikings. The biggest matchup for the Vikings in this game will be their defensive line versus the depleted offensive line of Green Bay. When you look at the Vikings top to bottom, their defensive front has a lot of depth. They have a lot of speed and athleticism. I look for these guys to try to establish that depth early in the game versus Green Bay. So that way you have your guys like Jared Allen ready for those money downs and crucial situations. And if they can get off the field with their pass rush, that's going to go a long way in getting that offensive football back because we know the Vikings really can run the football. So the defensive line play will be vital in order for these guys to win this matchup. But let's go inside the lab and look at their offense and see what they can do versus this 3-4 defense of Green Bay and how they can run the football utilizing the I formation and ace formations. In order for the Vikings to knock off the Green Bay Packers, they will have to run the football with Adrian Peterson, who's their best player, their healthy best player on offense. And here's how they can run the football against a 3-4 defense. I'm a big fan of the I formation. I would consider myself an I formation back. Just love to get the ball, get downhill right away, just like Adrian Peterson loves to get the football right away. And we also could use an ace formation. I'm gonna show you the benefits of both versus a 3-4 defense. Here, when you're facing a 3-4 defense, you have your two backers on the line of scrimmage, your backers over the guards, and your nose tackle, and your two five techniques. You gotta get these guys blocked. Now, on this play, we're gonna run an easy lead. Simple lead, you see where the natural bubbles are, in the 3-4 defense right there. And that's why the I formation is effective. That's why running versus the 3-4 is effective. The problem is you usually have a beast of a nose right there and that's the important thing. You gotta get the nose blocked in order to run the football against the 3-4, but there's natural bubbles in this defense. And we're just gonna run a straight lead. You see right here, we're gonna combo this nose tackle, get him blocked, we're gonna combo and lead him over to the backer. So that way we're gonna get this guy blocked. We're gonna kick out this five technique, tight end is gonna kick out this backer, and now you see what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually use a, a pulling play. We're gonna double lead. We're gonna lead the guard in the hole on the backer. We're gonna lead the fullback in the same hole and try to kick out that strong safety. We're gonna run Adrian Peterson right down the middle. Should be an effective play if everybody does their job. Here in the ace formation, the reason why I like this, it widens out the defense and it forces the safety to stay back and not close to the line of scrimmage like we have here. Because if he's close to the line of scrimmage, this passing play is wide open, easy. So that's why he has to stay back here because of the fact we have two tight ends and you really are strong to both sides out of the ace formation over here. We're gonna run weak side. We're gonna do the same blocking concepts. We're gonna pull this play side guard and we're gonna use these two guys to block these two guys. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna combo block, five technique, Tight end is gonna lead up to kick out the backer. Guard is pulling around to kick out this end right here and we're gonna run right through this alley and hope Adrian Peterson can beat the free safety for a touchdown. So running versus the 3-4 defense is effective. You just gotta find the right combination of plays and the Vikings do have the talent on the offensive line and they definitely have the talent in the backfield to make it happen. Now let's move over to Green Bay in this ball game and AJ Hawk, Desmond Moses and company and the rest of that linebacking core will have their hands full in the running game. They will have to make sure they put the Vikings in second and long and third and long situations. They will get tested by those guards. They'll get tested by the tackles. They're gonna have to make plays versus Adrian Peterson. And we know they're depleted right now. They don't have Clay Matthews. They don't have their ability to get after the quarterback like they want to, but they still can put the Vikings in backed up situations. They're just gonna have to be aggressive on those early down and distances. Now, when you look at the Packers offense, we know the O-line is struggling. They can't pass protect for Aaron Rodgers. They can't open up holes in the running game. They don't have the depth due to injuries, but they can help alleviate some of that pressure by utilizing their tight ends more one in the passing game and also in the run blocking department. You, you can have those tight ends chip before before they go out so that way you give Aaron Rodgers at least some time back there in the pocket to find those targets deep down the field and they may get Greg Jennings back and that's a big boost for their offense they're just gonna have to protect their front in order to have a chance this week versus Minnesota The X factor for the Vikings will be the safety play. The Packers offense puts a lot of pressure on the safeties because they love to go three, four, and sometimes empty. So your safeties will have to cover. They're going to have to step up and play some big time ball this week. And that Packers offensive line, it goes without saying, you're playing the Vikings. They love to get after the quarterback. You got to give Aaron Rodgers time in the pocket to make things happen on offense. 
Now, here are some of my coaching points for both teams in this matchup. For the Vikings, it's simple. You got to win the battle up front. That's on both offense and defense. They have the size and the talent to do so. And on defense, you got to get your head around. You got to be able to see those back shoulder throws. You got to turn around, make plays on the football, and you could probably come away with some interceptions. And you have to maximize your possessions. Touchdowns instead of field goals beat the Green Bay Packers. Now, for the Packers, you look at the last week's tape. Burn it. Don't even worry about it. Hit reset. Try to get better this game. New game, new matchups, new opportunities. And you want to help the offensive line out with the running game or the tight ends. That's going to be key. And you can go aggressive versus Christian Ponder. He's a guy that will try to get rid of that football quickly. Go aggressive. Force him into those quick short throws and rally up and make the tackles. Green Bay in this game, despite all of their offensive line issues and the depth on defense with the injuries, I still think they have enough to beat Minnesota. Minnesota right now can run the football, don't get me wrong, one of the best rushing teams in the league. But when you're one-dimensional and you can't trust your passing game, it makes it easy for a defensive coordinator like Dom Capers to beat you. So look for the Packers to come out aggressive and make things tough for Christian Ponder and that Vikings offense. And I want to give a huge shout-out to Packer fan forums and Viking fan forums for always showing football game plan support.